Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining me again for Wednesday night Bible class. Uh, my name is Lauren Crabtree. For those of you who may not have been with us last week or if you still don't know me, <laughs> I'm thankful that I can be here with you guys and that I have been given the opportunity to do this. Um, and I'm excited to talk about Moses tonight in the burning bush. Um, but before we get started, I would ask for you to join me in prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you so much for this time we're able to join together. Thank you for the technology that you give us that allows us to study even when we're apart from each other. And we thank you for your word that uh, is always available to us and that we can learn from no matter the circumstances and that it never changes and that it's always the same. And yet each time we can find something new and amazing in, inside of it. I want to ask that you be with all of those watching, whenever they're watching, and we just ask that you keep us all safe and healthy through this time. Be with our government and our leaders and help them make good decisions for our country and be with those worldwide and um, help everyone who is suffering right now um, to know that this is short and that you have a plan for us and that you have a plan for um, what will happen in the future and that everything is under your control. We love you so much, and we're thankful for your son, Jesus. It's in his name we pray. Amen. All right. Well, I am really excited again to be here, and uh, I hope that you enjoy this class and it's beneficial. Uh, there are activities linked in the description box below. Um, if your kid's watching this, you can have your parents help you print those off if you'd like to do some of them. If you're a parent watching, um, just click the little down arrow in the description and the links should all be there. I tried to include a description of what each link led to as well. So anyway, we will get started with our study. So I'm going to just try to share my screen here with you. Let's see, there we go. There. All right, so I'm going to be doing again a little devotional out of this book I read out of the other one last week in Describable, and this one is How Great is Our God. The Afar people of Dalo, Ethiopia live in one of the hottest places on earth on top of an active volcano where temperatures can reach as high as 145 degrees Fahrenheit. As nomads, they survive by moving mostly at night, eating lots of salt to replace the minerals they sweat out, and drinking milk. Yep, milk. Scientists say it's as hydrating as any sports drink. I pray that the God of peace will give you every good thing you need so that you can do what he wants. Hebrews 13:20. God filled our planet with amazing animals and equipped them to live in some of the most extreme climates on earth, like the Himalayan jumping spider. This eight-legged wonder lives some 22,000 feet up in the Himalayan mountains. Its home is three-fourths of the way up of the tallest point on earth, Mount Everest. It survives by eating bugs blown up the mountain by the wind. On the other side of the world, the giant kangaroo rat, which is only about a foot long, doesn't even need to drink water. A good thing, since it lives in Death Valley, one of the driest places on earth. It gets the liquid it needs from the seeds it eats. Then there's the Parum Vanellia Sulfancola. Don't worry, I can't say it either. Just call him Mr. Worm. He's a cute little guy with a feather duster face who lives near underwater vents that reach up to 170 degrees Fahrenheit. The wood frog goes to the other extreme. In winter, this little hopper hides under fallen leaves. A natural antifreeze chemical in its body keeps it from freezing to death. From mountaintops to sea bottoms and from desert heat to winter forests, God created animals to survive, even thrive, wherever he places them. And he does the same thing for you. In fact, in Psalms 139.3, says God already knows every path you'll ever walk, every place you'll ever be, every problem you'll ever, ever face. So you can trust him to know and give you everything you need, not only to survive, but thrive. So today we'll be talking about God giving Moses everything he needed to complete the mission that he had for him. Um, but before we get into our story, I'd like to go over our um, memory verse. So we'll just say it again like we did last week, and we'll sing the song and just kind of do it exactly how we did last week. So our memory verse is Jeremiah 29, 11, and it says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope in the future. So if you remember, 
we sing it to this tune of um, bingo. So it goes, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Do you guys remember that? Did you learn it last week and get it down? If you didn't, that's okay. If you weren't able to join us, that's all right. We're going to try it again. We're going to make it a little bit harder. I'm going to take some of the words out. All right, let's sing it together again. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Were you able to get all the words that time? Let's see if we can say it without singing it, with, all, with not all the words taken out, okay? For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. All right, let's take out some more. Let's see if we can do it, okay? For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Do you get it? Let's see if we can say it without singing it. With all these words gone. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Oh, excuse me. So, if you got all of that, you're doing really well. If you didn't, it's okay. We have a couple more weeks of learning it. And hopefully by the end, you'll be able to say it without having, having to think about the song. But if you need the song, it's okay. Songs are good to help us remember things. Speaking of remembering things by song, let's work on our Ten Commandments song. So let's um, just talk through them really quickly, and then we'll go back and sing them, okay? So the first one is, you shall have no other gods before me. So this means that nothing else comes before God. God is number one. You shall not worship idols or take my name in vain, which is really important with our story tonight. You're going to hear Moses ask who, um, who he should say sent him. And God says, I am. And he gives him all the different ways that he can say his name and who he is. Um, remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. Honor your father and mother. You shall not kill or commit adultery. You shall not steal or tell lies about people. It actually phrases this as bear false witness, um, which just means to tell lies about people. You shall not covet. Covet means that you want things that other people have and you want it in a way that means you don't want them to have it. You want it. All right, so that's all 10. We'll go back here and we will sing our song, all right? You shall have no other gods before me or worship idols or take my name in vain. Remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. Honor your father and your mother. You shall not kill or commit adultery. You shall not steal or tell lies about people. You shall not covet. With this the Lord was finished. These are the Lord's Ten Commandments. All right, we'll go back and sing it again. You shall have no other gods before me, or worship idols, or take my name in vain. Remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. Honor your father and your mother. You shall not kill or commit adultery. You shall not steal or tell lies about people. You shall not covet. With this the Lord was finished. These are the Lord's Ten Commandments. All right, we'll do that one one more time, and then we'll move on to our Ten Plagues song. All right. You shall have no other gods before me, or worship idols, or take my name in vain. Remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. Honor your father and your mother. 
You shall not kill or commit adultery. You shall not steal or tell lies about people. You shall not covet, but this the Lord was finished. These are the Lord's Ten Commandments. All right, so hopefully you guys can be working on those. If you're watching this and you want to rewind it and practice it again, you are welcome to do that. For now, we'll move on to our 10 plague song. So we'll, again, we will walk through the plagues and then we'll sing through them. So our first one is the water turned to blood, frogs, then lice, then flies, then the livestock died, but we're gonna say that in our song is death of the cattle, boils, hail, locusts, thick darkness, and death of the firstborn. All right, so we're gonna go back and we're going to sing our song now. The water turned to blood, frogs, lice, flies, and the death of the cattle boils and hail. Locust, thick darkness, death of the firstborn. All right, we'll go back and we will do that one more time. Sorry for all the clicking sounds with my PowerPoint. I tried to turn it off, but I can't. All right, the water turned to blood, Frogs, lice, flies, and the death of the cattle boils and hail. Look is thick darkness, death of the firstborn. All right, did you guys get all of those? We'll try it one more time just to make sure. All right, the water turned to blood. Frogs, lice, flies. And the death of the cattle boils and hail. Look is thick darkness, death of the firstborn. All right, so those are our 10 plagues. Now we are gonna talk about our story. So all those things are part of Moses' life, but they happen after this story. And this is the first time that Moses talks to God that we are aware of. Um, it's the first time that God's really talked to anyone for quite a long time, it seems. Um, we know that he talked to Abraham and he talked to Isaac and Jacob. We don't have record of him talking to Joseph other than letting Joseph interpret dreams. Um, and then we have some silence while the Israelites are living in Egypt and then when they're in slavery, we don't really know of God talking to anyone. So this is the first time we have God talking to somebody in a really long time. So it's really exciting. Um, I'm going to be reading from the Bible, straight out of the Bible, in the easy reader version. There'll be a couple of spots where I will skip just a few verses, just because it's a little bit long and um, God requires repeats himself, and not that I'm skipping God repeating himself, but um, since we're trying to keep it within a certain time, I'll just skip a few verses, but if you follow along with me, you should be able to um, see exactly where I'm going. So this is a story of Moses in the burning bush. You can find it in Exodus 2.11 if you'd like to get your Bible and turn there, and we'll be reading through Exodus 4.27. All right. Moses grew and became a man. He saw that his own people, the Hebrews, were forced to work very hard. One day, he saw an Egyptian man beating a Hebrew man. Moses looked around and saw that no one was watching, so he killed the Egyptian and buried him in the sand. The next day, Moses saw two Hebrew men fighting each other. He saw that one man was wrong and said to him, why are you hurting your neighbor? The man answered, did anyone say you could be our ruler and judge? Tell me, will you kill me as you killed the Egyptian yesterday? Then Moses was afraid. He thought to himself, not everyone knows what I did. Pharaoh heard about what Moses did, so he decided to kill him. But Moses ran away from Pharaoh and went to the land of Midian. Moses stopped near a well in Midian. There was a priest there who had seven daughters. These girls came to the well to get water for their father's sheep. They were trying to fill the water trough with water, but there were some shepherds who chased the girls away and would not let them get water. So Moses helped the girls and gave water to their animals. Then they went back to their father, Ruel. He asked them, why have you come home early today? The girls answered, the shepherds chased us away, but an Egyptian rescued us. He got water for us and gave it to our animals. So Ruel said to his daughters, where is this man? 
Why did you leave him? Go invite him to eat with us. Moses was happy to stay with the man. Ruel let Moses marry his daughter Zipporah. Zipporah became pregnant and had a son. Moses named him Gershom because Moses was a stranger in a land that was not his own. A long time passed and that king of Egypt died, but the Israelites were still forced to work very hard. They cried for help and God heard them. God heard their painful cries and remembered the agreement he made with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. God saw the trouble of the Israelites and he knew that he would help them soon. Moses' father-in-law named Jethro. Jethro was a priest of Midian. Moses took care of Jethro's sheep. One day, Moses led the sheep to the west side of the desert. He went to a mountain called Horeb, or Mount Sinai, the mountain of God. On that mountain, Moses saw the angel of the Lord in a burning bush. Moses saw that the bush was burning without being, being destroyed. So he decided to get closer to the bush and see how a bush could continue burning without being burned up. The Lord saw Moses was coming to look at the bush, so he called him from the bush. He said, Moses, Moses. Moses said, yes, Lord. Then God said, don't, don't come any closer. Take off your sandals. You are standing on holy ground. I am the God of your ancestors. I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Moses covered his face because he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I've seen the troubles my people have suffered in Egypt, and I've heard their cries when the Egyptians hurt them. I know about their pain. Now I will go down and save my people from the Egyptians. I will take them from that land and lead them to a good land where they can be free from these troubles. It is a land filled with many good things. I have heard the cries of the Israelites and I've seen the way the Egyptians have made life hard for them. So now I am sending you to Pharaoh. Go, lead my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, I'm not a great man. How can I be the one to go to Pharaoh and lead the Israelites out of Egypt? God said, you can do it because I will be with you. This will be the proof that I am sending you. After you lead the people out of Egypt, you will come and worship me on this mountain. Then Moses said to God, but if I go to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your ancestors sent me, then the people will ask, what is his name? What should I tell them? Then God said to Moses, tell them, I am who I am. When you go to the Israelites, tell them, I am sent me to you. And God said, tell the Israelites that you were sent by Yahweh, the God of your ancestors. This will be my name. It is how I want the people to remember me from now on. Now go and call together the elders of the people. Tell them that Yahweh, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob appeared to you. Give them this message from me. I have been watching over you and have seen what the people in Egypt have done to you. The elders will listen to you and, you will, and the elders will go to Pharaoh. You will tell him that I have sent you. There we must offer sacrifices to Yahweh our God. But I know that Pharaoh will not let you go. Only a great power will force him to let you go. So I will use my great power in Egypt. I will cause amazing things to happen in that land. After I do this, he will let you go, and I will cause the Egyptians to be kind to the Israelites. They will give many gifts to your people when they leave Egypt. Then Moses said to God, But the Israelites will not believe me when I tell them that you sent me. They will say, The Lord did not appear to you. But the Lord said to Moses, What is that you have in your hand? Moses answered, It is my walking stick. Then the Lord God said, Throw your walking stick on the ground. So Moses threw his walking stick on the ground and it became a snake. Moses ran from it. But the Lord said to him, reach out and grab the snake by its tail. When Moses reached out and caught the snake's tail, the snake became a walking stick again. Then God said, use your stick in this way and the people believe that you saw the Lord, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Then the Lord said to Moses, I will give you another proof. Put your hand under your robe. So Moses opened his robe and put his hand inside. Then he brought his hand out of the robe and it was changed. His hand was covered with spots that were white like snow. Then God said, now put your hand into your robe again. So Moses put his hand into his robe again. Then he brought his hand out and his hand was changed. Now his hand was good again as it was before. Then God said, if the people don't believe you when you use your walking stick, then they will believe you when you show them this sign. 
They still refuse to believe you after you show them both these signs and take some water from the river Nile. Pour the water on the ground, and as soon as it touches the ground, it will become blood. Then Moses said to the Lord, But Lord, I am telling you, I am not a good speaker. I have never been able to speak well, and that hasn't changed since you started talking to me. I'm still not a good speaker. You know that I speak slowly and don't use the best words. Then the Lord said to them, him, who made a person's mouth and who can make someone deaf or not able to speak? Who can make a person blind? Who can make a person able to see? I am the one. I am the Lord. So go. I will be with you when you speak. I will give you the words to say. But Moses said, my Lord, I beg you to send someone else, not me. Then the Lord became angry with Moses and said, all right, I'll give you someone to help you. Aaron the Levite is your brother, isn't he? He is a good speaker. In fact, Aaron is already coming to meet you and he will be happy to see you. I will tell you what to say. Then you will tell Aaron and I will help him say it. I will tell both of you what to do. So Aaron will speak for you. Like God, you will speak to him and he will tell the people what you say. So go and carry your walking stick with you. Use it and the other miracles to show the people that I am with you. Then Moses went back to Jethro, his father-in-law. Moses said to him, please let me go back to Egypt. I want to see if my people are still alive. Jethro said to Moses, go in peace. Then while Moses was still in Midian, the Lord said to him, it is safe for you to go back to Egypt now. The men who wanted to kill you are now dead. So Moses put his wife and children on the donkey and returned to Egypt. He carried his walking stick with him, the walking stick with the power of God. While Moses was traveling back to Egypt, the Lord spoke to him. When you talk to Pharaoh, remember to show him all the miracles that I've given you the power to do. But, this, but I will cause Pharaoh to be very stubborn. He will not let the people go. Then you should say to Pharaoh, this is what the Lord says. Israel is my firstborn son, and I am telling you to let my son go and worship me. If you refuse to let Israel go, then I will kill your firstborn son. The Lord had spoken to Aaron and told him, go out into the desert and meet Moses. So Aaron went and met Moses at the mountain of God. He saw Moses and kissed him. Moses told Aaron everything the Lord had commanded him to say and all the miracles he must do to prove that God had sent him. Well, what did you guys think? I'm sure you've heard that story before and I'm sure you've known about the burning bush, but I love that God repeats his name over and over again. And he stresses that he is the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob several times. Um, I also love that he tells Moses over and over again, I will be with you. And I also appreciate that he's patient with Moses, even though Moses is scared to do what God wants him to and comes up with lots of excuses. God gives him away every time and gives him help every time, just like he does for us. Um, even though God might call us to do something that seems scary or seems out of our comfort zone, he gives us a way to do it. He gives us the words that we need when we want to talk to a friend about coming to church with us. He gives us the words we need when we want to have a Bible study with somebody. Um, God is the one who is working the miracles. Moses was just the vessel for him. He was just the helper for God. So I hope that this story was encouraging to you today and that you continue to see that God has a path for you just like he had a path for Moses. He has a plan and he has it all laid out for you. You just have to follow his plan. I hope you guys have an excellent week this week. Um, I'm excited for the time we can be together again, but until then, I'm praying for everyone to be safe and enjoying this time. And I will see you back next Wednesday when we'll be talking about Moses and the 10 plagues. So hope you guys have a great week. Thank you for joining me. Bye.